When you ask a conspiracy theorist like Richard Vogues to explain just why he does the things he does, what motivates him to say the things he says, he'll probably answer that it's for the good of the children, for our children. Which is a very strange response to give because it implies the existence of at least one child whose custody is jointly held between Richard Vogues, the conspiracy theorist, and the rest of us who might hate watch his show in a spirit of pure loathing. But he's not even talking about his own children. Richard Vobes is actually the father of three, and his oldest child has children of his own, which makes Richard Vobes a grandparent. But I think we can be fairly sure that we're not talking about those relatively young children, because Richard Vobes is not allowed any contact with his grandchildren, mainly because of the very strange attitudes, the very strange things that he says about how children should be brought up. Are schools good places for boys and girls? Well, I think most of us are beginning to realise, of course, that they're not. They are a training camp for good citizens. Most people wouldn't really have a problem with that. The idea that schools are trying to turn our children into good citizens, in addition to providing a, a basic grounding in the principles of maths, the arts and the sciences, they are trying to give children an appreciation of just what it means to be a citizen in a democracy, our rights and obligations as members of this society. That's really not such a bad thing. Uh, it's a strange thing to object to. Uh, but as with just about everything Richard Vogue says, it's not really what he means, because what he's actually worried about is something altogether way more fantastical and weird. These are training camps to turn our boys and girls into obedient slaves, and many of which into sexual creatures. Richard Vobes has been sent a printout from the website Stop World Control, which is a sort of smorgasbord of literally every conspiracy theory known to man. And I'm a man who knows about quite a lot of conspiracy theories, given that it takes just a huge amount of my time watching ridiculous content like this so you don't have to. Suffice it to say that the content on Stop World Control is some of the most ludicrous conspiracy nonsense I've ever seen, and I spend almost all of my waking life watching ridiculous conspiracy nonsense. The United Nations has issued the document International Technical Guidance on Sexual Education. It is the official guideline for elementary schools around the world. The goal of this document is to equip children to have sexual relationships. Richard is referring to a document called International Technical Guidance for Sexuality Education, an Evidence-Informed Approach, published by UNESCO. And you won't be surprised to learn that the content of the document has absolutely nothing at all to do with what Richard Vobes just claimed. He's claiming that the document is there to encourage primary school age children, so that would be from the age of six to approximately 12 years old, to go out and have active sexual relationships. The document contains nothing of the sort. And if Richard Vobes had been learning about the document by looking at the document, rather than learning about it from the conspiracy theory website, Stop World Control, that he seems to be repeating and quoting from uncritically, he would have learned that this is a fairly non-controversial document that talks about things like uh, how teachers can talk about gender, topics that might be culturally sensitive, such as menstruation, gender equality, child marriage, and uh, female genital mutilation, things that children in certain parts of the world really do need to know about in order to live successful and healthy lives. But that's the thing about people like Richard Vobes. When they say, they want us to all think of the children and, and be mindful of our children. They don't want our children to have successful, healthy lives. What they actually want is more control over our children, whoever these children actually are. 
presumably not their children, the children they no longer have contact with. We're talking about schools here. Schools must equip children to have sexual partners. This evidence report reveals how the World Health Organization and the United Nations are sexualizing little children in primary education worldwide for the purpose of normalizing paedophilia. There's a very good reason why Richard Vobes, the grandparent, is not permitted any access to his two grandchildren. There's a reason why Richard Vobes' own child has determined that contact with those children is unsuitable. It was the only thing that could be done to preserve the safety of these children. And we're starting to see the signs of it in this video from Richard, because he is taking a very distasteful conspiracy theory from an obviously propaganda website and repeating it uncritically, despite the fact that the amount of work it would have taken to disprove what he's saying is actually far less than the time it took him to say it. He could have downloaded the document, checked if what the, this claim said about the document was true, easily verified that it wasn't, and then he could have remained entirely silent on the subject. That would have been far better than what he actually did, which was to repeat some really quite disgusting conspiracy theories that really should not be uttered by anybody with an ounce of respectability, with the tiniest amount of self-respect. Little children are sexual beings who must have sexual partners and begin with sex as soon as possible. For this reason, kindergartens and elementary schools must teach children to develop lust, lust and sexual desire. From Richard Vobes' perspective, it must be quite painful to acknowledge that the reason why he doesn't have access to his own grandchildren is because of his own behaviour, because of his own failings as a parent and a grandparent. And so, in time-honoured truth the manner, Richard Vobes simply doesn't do the things he'd rather not do. For him, acknowledging his own failures is like paying taxes. It's something that other people have to do. Instead, Richard Vobes would like to concoct or at least agree to this conspiracy theory that the reason why he doesn't have access to his grandchildren is really because of the agenda of a set of uh, petty bureaucrats who occupy a basement office in the United Nations building and have drafted this insidious document whose entire purpose is to sexualize a generation of the world's children in order to turn them away from the ever-loving care of grandparents like Richard Vobes. You see, it's so much easier for Richard Vobes to embrace the fantasy than the reality, because the reality is really not kind to Richard Vobes. It exposes him for what he is, a horrible narcissist who says terrible things and gives completely bonkers advice that no parent with even a shred of sanity would be in their right mind to follow and learn different sexual techniques, such as oral sex. That's all in speech marks. That is all in speech marks, but it's not actually a quotation, or at least not an accurate quotation from the document. Do you see that uh, ellipsis there? It's doing some very heavy lifting, eliding 20 words from the document, and somewhat changing the meaning of the quotation from what the document actually said. It's basically a lie. It's an obvious abuse of the idea of quotation that Richard Vobes doesn't seem to have noticed. The document in question, this thing that uh, has inspired Richard Vobes's fury, the document that Stop World Control are criticizing, seems to be a perfectly normal introduction into the subject of comprehensive sexuality education, and the section deals with empowering children to form healthy relationships in the very obvious context that these children will eventually grow up to become adults, and if they do not have the ability to form healthy and respectful relationships, they will become somebody like Richard Vobes, 
they will become a narcissistic abuser. And that is clearly what the authors of this document are trying to prevent. While media outlets and political parties are calling for the acceptance of paedophilia as a normal sexual orientation. Who are these politicians who are standing up on the soapbox and demanding that paedophilia should be accepted as a, as, a, as a normal standard way of life? That's just not something that's happening. Anyone who's paying any attention to any kind of modern discourse knows that it's never been a thing. Richard Vobes is living in a sort of fantasy la-la land where in order for him to feel better about himself, everybody else, whether you're a, a teacher or a politician or, or, or somebody who just doesn't think that every teacher and politician is a paedophile, they're all in on it. They're all part of this vast conspiracy. The worst everybody else is, the better Richard Vobes can feel about himself. Nine-year-old children are to be taught about masturbation, sexual attraction and sexual stimulation and develop their own interest in their own and others' bodies. The reason why this message is so alluring to Richard Vobes and his audience is that it allows them to feel better about themselves. They would rather not think of themselves as the, the boomer generation who has been ostracised for their own bad behaviour. They would much rather think of themselves as a, a campaigning generation. People who are saying what needs to be said for the good of our children, if not their children. Richard Bobes wants to feel useful. He wants to feel like he's using his platform to get a, a message out. To, to send a message, to expose a horrible truth that will help untold numbers of children, children that he does not know and may never meet, who apparently are having things done to them by teachers and political parties that uh, strangely don't seem to exist. Children between four and six must learn about masturbation and be encouraged to express their sexual needs and wishes. Children between six and nine must learn about sexual intercourse and self-stimulation. How are you supposed to deal with someone like Richard Vobes? If you have a Richard Vobes in your family and he says things like this, these disgusting things that he says, what are you supposed to do? Because you can argue with him. You can point out that none of his beliefs are based on evidence and the source that he is citing from is in fact an unhinged conspiracy theory website written by anonymous propagandists. But Richard Vobes doesn't have any kind of basis for sorting out fact from fiction. He just believes whatever makes him feel better. He'll believe that and he'll say that even if it makes everybody else in his life feel a lot worse. Which is why ultimately these people get shut out. People don't want that person in their lives because they are toxic, they're dangerous, they sap your energy, they, they make you feel terrible. So it must have been very hard for Richard Vobes' family, but I suspect they did the right thing by keeping him as far as possible from those children. And children between nine and 12 years must have their first sexual experience and learn to use online pornography. I think Richard Vobes realises that he's not going to get back in with his own family. There's no way that his family will allow him to have any kind of meaningful contact with those children while he continues to behave like this. Uh, this isn't, though, a message for his own family. The intended target audience of this message are the other conspiracy theorists who watch the Richard Vobes show. Uh, and what he's actually trying to do here is establish a form of kinship. It's a shared explanation for why they have all been cut off from their own families. 
it's a sort of meta-conspiracy theory. It's a conspiracy theory that explains the way that conspiracy theorists feel about their own situation. And it posits this very complicated explanation that, that the reason why they no longer find themselves invited to Thanksgiving dinner or to have uh, the company of the grandchildren that they so dearly would like to see has nothing to do with their bad behavior and has everything to do with this mysterious cabal whose entire mission was to separate loving grandparents from their family. That's what Richard Vobes is essentially arguing is happening here. And make no mistake about this, I know that this is going on. We've, I have emails from parents, from mums and dads, from people all around the world who tell me these things. So what Richard is saying here is that the evidence that backs up these bizarre sounding claims, the notion that British primary school students are being sexualized, being forced to learn about how to perform intimate sexual acts, being taught by school teachers how to access online pornography. Well, the evidence for this claim is that Richard Vobes has heard some gossip from other people who also think it is true. There we go. Other conspiracy theorists believe a thing is true, therefore it must be true. There can be no greater standard of evidence than that which Richard Bobes has just articulated for us. We, we can all go home now. There is no reason to doubt a single word, no matter how truly bizarre it sounds. I cannot tell you how sickening this is to a father of three children, and I have two grandchildren. My children are in their 30s, and as I hint there that one of them it has, has had children and they will be going to school, they are. Richard is offering a strange sort of self-defense here. That's what it is. He'd like the world to know that he isn't a bad parent. He isn't a bad grandparent. He'd like us all to believe that what he was doing was protecting our children from untold horrors that most people are blissfully unaware of. A and only he, because he had time to do the research, he became aware of the horrors that the children must be protected from. All of this is an entirely self-serving monologue. Richard would like us to believe that the horrors that he has read on the Propaganda Conspiracy website are real, and therefore everything that he said and did as a parent and a grandparent was entirely justified. That's basically his argument. My eldest son does not want to listen to the things I'm talking about. For good reason, because what Richard Vobes says is unhinged. We're talking about the man who puts out two shows per day of some of the most unhinged content that has ever been seen on any form of media. This is the man who invites charlatans, liars and grifters onto his show every single day to promote their wackadoodle crackpot patent remedies. He's the man who invites idiots onto the show, people who believe that they can disperse the contrails from aircraft, which they refer to as chemtrails, using a, a boiling pot of vinegar. People who are so ludicrous and stupid, and Richard Vobes gathers them all together and presents them for his own audience's uneducation. Is there any reason why a child might wish to defend their own child from that kind of parent? It's the natural thing to do. When you have the, the totality of the man, you can see that he is a, a toxic harmful narcissist, and no good will come of ever listening to such a man. They're not open-minded. They've taken certain medical interventions, which we've seen has not been a good idea. And they have been turned into obedient slaves. 
I'm sure growing up in that household was not easy because Richard Bobes presents all of the signs of being a narcissistic abuser. Somebody who is only happy when the members of that family are behaving precisely the way in accordance with his demands and desires. It's very difficult to grow up under the care of a narcissistic abuser because they don't really care. They only care about themselves and their own personal aggrandizement. And that's probably why that son of Richard Vobes, the one who has the two children that Richard Vobes can never see. It's why that person has put up those barriers because ultimately the only way they can prosper is by putting distance between themselves and the abuser and by protecting the next generation from the same kinds of abuse that they had to undergo. It's really quite a rational and logical thing to do. So if you are the victim of that kind of abuse, my, my heart goes out to you because there are plenty of horrible people like Richard Vobes who would like to perpetrate that abuse yet again on the next generation. It's not as if, though, that Richard will go quietly because it's quite obvious that what he wants is that control back. It's not enough that he did it to his own kids. He would like to subjugate, if not his own grandchildren, then everybody else's grandchildren. We mentioned Julia. She, despite being, from what I can tell, a complete imbecile, is homeschooling her children. Those children really won't have much of a chance in life because they are receiving their education from a woman and possibly also her very strange boyfriend. They have absolutely no knowledge of anything beyond what somebody who is a 16-year-old a school dropout might know. That is the entire sum total of Richard Vobes' life academic learning. I, I couldn't think of anything worse for these children than to submit them to homeschooling at the hands of uh, a narcissistic conspiracy theory abuser. Somehow or other, we need to pull these children out of the school, set up more homeschooling. I can't think of a worse start in life than to have a conspiracy theorist parent who insists on homeschooling a child despite not knowing anything himself. That's really what Richard Vobes is. He left school age 16 to pursue life as a sort of circus entertainer. He does mimes and funny voices and little comedy skits like that. He briefly had an unsuccessful TV show on Scottish television. But aside from that, he knows nothing at all of life and business. He doesn't know about science and mathematics. He couldn't tell you the first thing about the principles of biology. He is completely unqualified to teach a child anything. And yet, it is people like Richard Vobes and the people who follow Richard Vobes who believe, based on this strange conspiracy theory we've just reviewed, that it entitles them. In fact, it, it mandates that they should withdraw children from the British schooling system. With all of its flaws, it's not a perfect thing. But anything is going to be better than being homeschooled by Richard Vobes. It's not for me to say 100% this is happening because it's for you to actually read the report and have a look for yourselves, but it's 100% happening. <laughs> It's at times like this that I really wish that people like Richard Vobes had the benefit of a CSE programme, a Comprehensive Sexuality Education, because the programme that he is criticising emphasises the importance of forming healthy social and sexual relationships. So the person that he decided to form a family with. If Richard Vobes had been a little bit less unhinged and a bit more respectful, he might be still with that person. Uh, and maybe he could have learnt a little bit about the needs of the children he produced, how to be more respectful 
to their needs uh, as children who eventually grew into adults and had children of their own. If he had paid more attention to the quite sensible advice in the document that he was criticising, I think it would have done him well. But we know Richard Vobes by now well enough to know that he will never do the right thing. He will always choose the narcissist's path. He will always promote himself. He will promote wacky conspiracy theories to build kinship with those other wackaloons who have been excluded from their own families. Those are his family now, whether he likes it or not. But you, dear friends, are my family. At least that's how I think of you when my real family aren't around. And um, in order to celebrate kinship with me, I'd encourage you all to join the Telegram channel. What's Telegram? Well, it is a chat system not dissimilar to WhatsApp. But it's the one that all the conspiracy theorists use for their bizarre, unhinged conversations. So I thought, well, that would be the ideal place for Mind of Steel. If you want to join the Telegram conversation, please uh, follow the link on my YouTube homepage. It's just one click away, and you, you can uh, join an ongoing discussion related to the topics of this uh, rather unsavoury programme that I have just presented for you. And until next week, I promise you that I will have something hopefully a little bit more uplifting, less um, excruciating, less like amateur dentistry than today's little shop of horrors.